Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you're having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Libra. The Hierophant. The bottom of the deck was the Six of Cups. Failed to mention that. Sorry. The Hierophant. Um, the Hierophant and the Wheel of Fortune. I feel like for right now, some people are reflecting on the past. Um, the Four of Pentacles. Again, we're about to have Mercury retrograde, uh, full moon energy right now. But with the Six of Cups being the overall energy, this is about old friends, reconciliation, um, nostalgia. It's about childhood things. It's inner child healing. It's going back to the things that made you happy, that make you feel childlike and innocent. Um, you could be remembering love. Um, there's a lot coming out about love. Because what I what is I literally just saw was if you've ever seen the movie Love Jones, I just saw at the end when Nina when she decided to do her spoken word and at the end I think the very last line of the poem she said, "I am remembering love." Okay, the Six of Cups. You have the Hierophant here and the Wheel of Fortune. Some of you. This isn't so much about you only thinking back over something from the past or past relationship or situation, uh, friendship or whatever. I spoke about this earlier in a reading and what I w would like to say now, just because I see the Hierophant and the Wheel of Fortune, that's the number five and then the number 10. I feel like you're about to double up on something here. Um... Because of your beliefs switching and changing, you are truly about to inherit this will of fortune. But it's very important right now that you understand your own morals, values, your beliefs, that you are prioritizing your, your spiritual journey, your sacred journey, and understanding that there are traditions that you are not meant to conform to and there are traditions that you are meant to create. Something here is very much destined for you to do. You may be finding yourself wanting to go back and do something that you've done in the past. Maybe it didn't work out then. Perhaps you didn't have the tools, the resources, the knowledge, power, information, or authority to do it. But that is changing now. Okay, for some of you, it could be a job, it could be a creative project, it could be a relationship, but it's something here, it's coming back around. And with Mercury retrograde approach, it's like you have an opportunity to do something much better than you did the first time this opportunity was presented to you. Okay, the four of pentacles is here. It's like you're, you're holding on to something or you've been holding back. Now, wow, you have the Four of Pentacles, the Emperor, and the Ace of Pentacles. For some of you, you could have a masculine energy that has been holding back. Okay? You could have walked away from someone. You can be very guarded when it comes to this person making some type of grand gesture or an offer. And for some of you, quite frankly, somebody may make a really huge offer and you still may choose to withdraw from this situation and walk away. Because if you are quick to make a decision with the Knight of Swords here and the Two of Wands in the reverse, I'm getting two different things. If you're too quick for some of you to make a decision to move forward with something, with a particular person, especially if they are in the Four of Pentacles energy of being very possessive, you could really, really make a bad decision and it could cause you to not be able to inherit this Ten of Pentacles. For some of you, it's like this Two of Wands in the reverse is the Four of Pentacles sometimes can speak about possessiveness and, and holding back or being controlling. But the Four of Pentacles can also speak about building the for the future. It can speak about being frugal or, you know, being very wise with your resources because you're building something for the future for yourself with the emperor here and the eight of cups. The eight of cups sometimes is about walking away, but walking away usually leads to a person walking into their actual destiny. The knight of swords is somebody here is about to take action very quickly, I feel, to um, 
go in the direction of their purpose of something long term. So for some of you, it's like you you need to make sure that you you don't rush into a situation with somebody that does not have good intentions. And for some of you, you need to make sure that you don't drag your feet with somebody who does have good intentions for you. The death card is here in the reverse and then temperance. Scorpio and temperance is Scorpio season, Sagittarius season. But the death card is here in the reverse. So something here is possibly not ending. Everything is showing up as doubles. And I think that that's because right now we have this full moon and Gemini energy. I'm seeing both sides of every situation. And a lot of people are going to argue and say, oh, well, it's confusing. No, it's not. It's energy. And there's, there, there's two sides to every coin. Some people are refusing to allow a situation to end. Some people are refusing to allow a certain a situation to actually have a rebirth. The, the death card being in the reverse for some, like I said, it's something here. It, it's not ending. Therefore, you can't have peace, balance, and harmony. Some of you, be, if you choose to allow something to come back, you will have peace, balance, and harmony. It really depends on your situation. So as long as I can see both sides of the coin, I'm going to read both sides. The King of Wands is here. This is about you being a visionary. Some of you are considering entrepreneurship, the Ten of Swords. Whatever this is, though, there is some type of... Um, feeling of, of being betrayed or feeling defeated like you've had some kind of bad luck some of you feel like you've had bad luck when it comes to you having the type of independence or the leadership the rewards recognition um that you wanted you could be lacking creativity or like some type of passion maybe right now you're not going after something in a in an assertive manner because of the ten of swords because you've been betrayed because you've been hurt because there's been some kind of bad luck here yeah the eight of pentacles is in the reverse be careful not to feel like you just should not work on something that is actually good for you whether it's a creative project or something in your your job your work profession or even a relationship or just your own personal journey you know whether this is your health your fitness or whatever it is don't allow yourself because of any kind of heartbreak, pain, separation, anxiety, or anything else to cause you to resist some type of change here. Some of you, you could even have new love coming in. And because you've been hurt in the past, you now are not allowing yourself to embrace this yin and yang, this temperance energy, um, this balance between your actions and your emotions. Spirit is telling you very clearly here, you need to stop straddling the fence. The two of pentacles, it's, it's decision time. Six of Pentacles, you need to go after whatever situation is going to bring you generosity, a generosity of time, a, gen, a like generosity when it comes to time, effort, energy, attention, whatever you know that you need at this time. If you're not receiving it, it's time for some type of change to be made. Yeah, there you have it. The Hierophant and the Lovers. Some of you, and I've been saying this for a long time, it's truly time for you to figure out how you want to spend the rest of your life, whether you're single or in a connection. For some of you, when you really think about how you want to spend the rest of your life, it's time for you now to be very clear about who you're going to spend your life with. So you could be in a relationship right now and it's not going well. The truth is, it's time for you to let it go. Some of you need to be more clear about who you're actually manifesting to come into your life. If you have someone in your life now, it may be time to have that checkpoint conversation and say, hey, this is what I want. And, 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 and assess and evaluate, are you and this person on the same page or not? Because right now, it's all about decisions. We are going into a new year very soon. 
the year of the number eight. It's about infinite abundance. Right now, we're in the year of the number seven. That's your chariot. You need to know, are you going to be riding, you know, in a coupe by yourself or is somebody going to get in the coupe with you? Six of wands here. You're going to receive some good news, though. But it's like you have to take action. There is good news coming about something that you're very passionate about. Or there's a person coming into your life who is very driven, very passionate. It could be very charming. The Knight of Wands. I just heard a new kid on the block. Page of Pentacles. Somebody is about to... This, this, this has a lot to do with a new beginning, though. Somebody is very just optimistic and hopeful they're ready the knight of wands and the king of wands is out here this is showing growth it's showing maturity okay somebody is growing um when it comes to being a leader being a leader being committed to them themselves or this is you um and the things that are important to you Somebody is truly about to make a commitment. The devil card is here. I feel like somebody, yeah, injustice. Somebody now is releasing toxicity so that they are in a, a place where they can create the Ten of Cups. Whether single or alone. King of Wands here. It could For some of you, if this isn't you, this could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Somebody could have, I'm getting Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Libra, Gemini, Taurus. Scorpio. I don't know why I felt the need to say those signs, but it's because they're all clustered here together. And the Wheel of Fortune, whenever I see the Wheel of Fortune, even especially in the traditional right away that I always think astrology and natal charts, somebody could have the all those signs in their chart. Fire, Libra, Capricorn, Taurus, Gemini. We are in Sagittarius season. Somebody could be a Sag for sure. They could have, they could be on the cusp of Sagittarius and Capricorn. This person could have Libra in their chart. Um, it's like their rising sign or North Node. This is very, this is very, very specific what I'm getting. This person may or may not have Taurus in their chart, but this may be the type of person who is very, um, very, very traditional. They could be very religious. They could be very spiritual. Okay. The lovers, somebody could be making a choice right now too of do they want to go down a path of being religious or spiritual, or are they trying to figure out how can they tie the two of them in together? You know, especially if they have certain standards and traditions, There's this is a person that we're picking up on right now. Seven of Swords here. Some of you, you're dealing with a the person. They've been hiding the fact that they've hit rock bottom, or they're in some type of crisis. They've experienced some kind of bad luck here. This Seven of Swords here. This also too with the Seven of Swords and the Devil. You may not know everything about a battle that someone is facing. And this doesn't have to be something like really, really bad. But for some of you, it's like a person that you're either dealing with or somebody from your past. Somebody here is hiding the fact that they made a very foolish decision in the past. And they're watching you. From afar, or they are being watched. The Fool and the Six of Cups. Somebody here is also experiencing like a, a crisis in their life right now. Yeah, because they're being watched possibly by someone from their past. This could be you or a person that you're connected with. And with the Page of Swords being here with this Eight of Swords, somebody has a person in their energy, either now or a person from their past, who is mentally unstable, who is really watching them closely. 
this person wants someone or wants you to choose them, but they have proven to be unreliable. They, they've proven to be someone who brings restrictions to a person's life because of their attitude. So, so somebody is freeing themselves from this energy. This is somebody who is freeing themselves from a toxic karmic situation. And if this happens to be a person that you're dealing with, what, what I just heard very clear as day, <laughs> this person, for some of you, they're not necessarily trying to hide that there's something wrong with this person. They may not have known that it was something wrong with this person. Sometimes you don't really know that a person is not wrapped so tightly until all the screws fall out. Somebody may be just now recognizing and realizing that they are being watched, stalked, monitored, and something else by a person who feels trapped, who is maybe currently in, in isolation, having a lot of different negative thoughts. Somebody here could be having a difficult time overcoming a breakup or they've had some kind of job loss. Somebody is definitely being watched and monitored by a person that is not in a good place mentally. And this may just now be really starting to show itself. This may be causing a major interference, though, for those of you who are in some type of connection. Even if you are connected to somebody mainly spiritually and not physically. Because they have somebody that is always in their energy. Causing interferences. So for some of you. It's like a person is thinking about you more because they're going through a very difficult time with somebody else who is not mentally healthy. And it doesn't even have to be a lover. It could be a loved one. Temperance. If somebody here is trying to exercise patience and self-control in a situation where they know that a person is really, really just acting, acting out. You have here the Ace of Swords. That's the truth. But somebody here, someone's patience and their ability to have self-control because they know what their purpose is, is what's going to allow them really to have a major breakthrough. And it's going to help them to, to break away from a situation of someone that could be a mother figure. It could be someone's ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, the mother of their children. This could even be someone's mother. Somebody is breaking free from a person who is very possessive, delusional, and overall just mentally unhealthy. death card in the reverse Scorpio energy again yeah somebody is off their rocker right now I'm I'm like you can see this person is car like somebody here is in Lulu land um somebody I'm, I'm seeing somebody somebody may sit in the car for very long periods of time just either listening to music on the phone, like somebody does not know what to do. They they sit still a lot. Not because of their patient, but this person, they cannot think clearly. Wow. Ten of Wands. Wow. Ten of Wands with the death card in the reverse. Ooh. For some, this ten of the this ten of wands with the death card in the reverse is there is a permanent ending here. Because we have wow, well, yeah, the star and the ten of pentacles. There's gonna be a permanent ending here. To whatever this burdening situation is. 
some somebody has to get out of a person's life, their energy, or whatever, because this situation has it has gone on for too long. This is like divine judgment being called on a situation. The seven of wands is in the reverse, and the high priestess, the five of pentacles. I'm hearing right now you really shouldn't be fighting too much with your own intuition. There is some type of clarity or truth that you know. And it feels like somebody is, is still second guessing themselves. For I, This message seems very specific for somebody. If you know, if you're feeling like a person right now is having issues maybe with their mental health, whether it's a friend, family member, or lover, you're correct. They are. They are. This too. Now this is interesting. Very interesting what I'm getting right now. <laughs> Somebody may feel like they are having some kind of mental health issue. I'm going to even say like a mental breakdown and they're actually having a spiritual awakening. Somebody's spiritual awakening right now could have them in, have their mental health declining because if something is happening so fast and it's so strong and powerful for somebody, there's like an undoing happening. Like somebody is being forced to go through a rebirth to the point that it has them stuck. Once again, I'm getting different. I'm seeing somebody here who is mentally unstable and very obsessed with somebody, delusional. But I'm also picking up an energy, again, On the if this is all about duality. On the other side of the coin, somebody feels like they're going insane right now because they're go their third eye is open. Their crown chakra is opening. They're receiving so many downloads and so, so much information that it's, almost, it's, it's difficult to process so much. It's an overload of information. Let's see. You have here the chariot. It's time to move forward though, because this Ten of Cups is waiting on somebody. <laughs> Behind the Ten of Cups is the Ace of Cups. You have here the World card. This is an upgrade. It's an elevation. There's a cycle that has completed. This is a for sure like a karmic cycle, a, a cycle of bad luck, a cycle of feeling like you're hit, hitting rock bottom, a cycle of feeling abandoned, neglected, or misunderstood, a cycle of not truly embracing yourself or your beliefs. All of that is coming to it to an end. Somebody now is moving forward towards true love, true happiness. Maybe you're traveling. Some of you could be relocating. Um. Somebody could be choosing to live abroad or somebody is a foreigner. Here's a page of cups and the nine of cups and the queen of wands. This page of cups is in the reverse. Nine of Cups, Queen of Wands, Eight of Cups, Six of Cups. I feel like somebody now, somebody may be choosing not to accept a, a certain offer because you're going after something that you feel is 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 much better. This could be turning down like a job and going, you know, waiting on something better or starting your own thing. The Queen of Wands is here. The Queen of Wands is very confident, you know, assertive, ambitious. The Nine of Cups. This is a lot of self-love and wish fulfillment. The Eight of Cups. Somebody definitely could be choosing. I feel like somebody here is choosing themselves. It's not like choosing yourself like or or choosing like you're going to be single forever or anything like it's just though right now in this season 
it seems like by choosing yourself, it literally opens you up to a world of, of everything that will bring you fulfillment in your career life, your family life, your friendships, as well as your romantic partnerships. Because the Page of Cups is here in the reverse. This is also, I feel like, letting go of childish behavior, letting go of inner child issues, and going on a journey. Somebody could for sure be going on a journey, traveling, choosing to live abroad or something like that. And I feel like by doing this, it's going to help a person to overcome a lot of heartache and pain. There's a new journey that you're about to go on. It's going to really, really force you to get out of healing because this is a brand new experience. Whatever this is, this is a brand new experience. It's sort of like you decide to take a job that's out of town or to relocate and now all of a sudden you have a new place or you're decorating your place in a different way. You're meeting new people. You have new friends. You know, everything changes. You you go to a different church or, you know, you're going to a different place now for your meditation or yoga sessions and it just opens you up to a community of people it you know you may find a person that you and you you're dating that could turn into something very serious it's just everything boom there's there's like one decision here once you make this decision eight of wands everything is just like a surefire and this is very fast moving energy that comes about as soon as you do this it's it's true it's really just choosing to be happy choosing to just be in the present moment choosing to be happy choosing to embrace your duality to move forward even with with your wounds your pain the suffering the lessons taking the wisdom taking the lessons just choosing yourself just choosing to be happy choosing a new beginning choosing a new lover choosing a new creative project just just choose new for some people here this debate just choose to be present and choose something new. That, like literally that's all you have to do. That's it. And that's the easier route for a lot of people. When you stop wondering about the past. When you stop trying to go back and fix the past. And you just take today. For what it is and just move forward. That's when. It's like the world, the universe is just going to open up to you. A lot of you, it's, you have a blessing here. And, and you're asking, well, God, you're waiting on, God is waiting on you. <laughs> God is waiting on you to come out of your suffering, your pain, and your anxiety, this ongoing battle that you've been in. The tower in, this, in the reverse, it's like somebody here, you won't let the tower happen. You won't allow yourself to just let everything crash and burn so that you can literally just start completely over. Let it burn down to the ground. You're going to rebuild and it's going to be better, more modern. It's going to be nicer, more spacious, like burn everything. This is your opportunity to start something exactly how you want it. Yeah, the nine of pentacles and the nine of wands. <laughs> you see that now? Nine, nine, nine. Something here is, it's, there's a completion coming. Nine of pentacles, nine of wands, nine of swords. And the tower is in the reverse. And here's the nine of cups. So you could be saying 99, 99, 999. Let's see what the angel number 99, 99 means. I know some of you are definitely saying angel number 9999, but what does 9999 mean? Um, it says 9999, take a moment, reflect back on your life and your current situation. Try and figure out how the message sent to you through this number relates to your goals and aspirations. It says, if you see angel number 9999, brace yourself for significant changes. It means you are blessed. The changes that are about to take place in your life are all positive and you should not be worried. 
You are about to become a better person, trusting your guardian angels to help you through any challenges you are currently facing. Anytime you see the number nine repeatedly appear somewhere, you have a special message from the divine spirits. The energy that you receive from this number is that of compassion, tolerance, and philanthropy. Those who see the number 9999 are also confident and optimistic. And you know, I want to talk about that because it's interesting that I, I saw that. I'm going to take that message even for myself because the reading that I posted before this one where I was talking about the importance of those people who have had a past life lover, whether you, you know, say the person is a soulmate or a twin flame, the deep, deep pain and grief of finally facing the fact that you may not have a romantic relationship or marriage or a partnership that's going to last a lifetime. It literally is, has caused so much grief, pain, and suffering and isolation for people that now for a lot of people in the collective who are shifting into a higher level of consciousness and are understanding that some people are going to come into your life and they are going to teach you love because you love them unconditionally. Now, you're going to meet people if you allow yourself to by accepting that you it's better to have loved unconditionally than to never have experienced a type of love before. Some of you now are about to experience the person coming to your life who is going to love you unconditionally. And it may be weird because you may find yourself loving people now with conditions because you knew what happened to you when you love someone unconditionally. But that 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 positive energy and the optimism I, I i can't tell you how bad i've been bashed in the comments as of lately because of where i am especially even in my personal life like there's no need to be miserable there's no need to find it so bad to have to separate or leave someone behind when a situation ends in your life your life is not over sometimes you truly have to find the good in a goodbye. And I just want to say this for a moment because it's been really heavy on me, especially with this full moon energy with all of the releasing energy. It's so easy for us to create a false narrative in our minds. And I've had readings about this too. And I noticed a lot of you guys, you don't like the readings. But when I speak the truth from a place of, of true wisdom, you, you don't like it. And that's fine. Because everybody will not understand. Sometimes when you are understanding your higher self, your ego can no longer play a role. It's so easy for a person to talk about, oh, that person was karmic because they chose somebody else, blah, 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 blah. But if you really understand like divine assignments, missions, and soul purpose and contracts, Every single thing has some type of purpose and we can say, oh, they, they went down the wrong path. They went down the wrong path because they didn't choose you and your ego doesn't like that. But God chose them to go down whatever path they went through. When we talk about karmic relationships, some of us, we were birthed into karmic families and relationships. Our parents were karmic. Two people can come together and they may not really, really love each other, but they may have a child who is chosen, much like many of us, that will be the generational curse breaker. And here we are as readers, as people, listeners, viewers. Oh, my God, they're so karmic. They're so karmic. You don't know what God's purpose is for that person. And every time you're not a part of their purpose, you cannot get mad at them. Let per people live their life. You, you, nobody is, owes you anything. Nobody, you don't own people. And when readers like myself start to say, leave that person alone. Let that person live their life. Send them love and light. It, it's so much easier for you to release a person with love than to hold on to the bitterness and, and to hate them. Everything that you lost, in that situation, it was for you to learn some type of lesson and gain wisdom. And the truth is, like the nine of swords here and the nine of wands that's here together, a lot of people, you choose to go nine, 10, 20 years 
in an ongoing battle of suffering because you don't know how to find wish fulfillment and happiness in your own personal freedom and independence. People want to say, oh, well, it was a spell work and the black magic. Let me tell you something. Light drives out darkness. Once again, there's duality. We will always exist. There will always be good, bad, evil, ugly. But the strength and the power and being vulnerable enough to forgive a person and say, obviously, you didn't know what you were doing or maybe I wasn't ready for that situation. However, that cookie crumbled. At the end of the day, I send you away with love and light. You just canceled out every curse that was sent to you. Instead of you constantly, well, they did this to me. They did that to me. That person is with somebody else. Because maybe in their contract this lifetime, they're supposed to have children together. They're supposed to have a business. Your ego is hurt because you're not a part of their purpose. Your purpose and God's purpose are not the same. People need to understand, even in marriages and relationships, you're choosing a person. But let me tell you, when you choose the person that God chose for you, everything is very different. Everything. I would say, people, it's not all Marvin Gaye lingerie, rainbows, butterflies. Everybody wants to be a divine feminine, divine masculine, but when you have to start making those sacrifices to be obedient to God, a lot of you, you don't want to do it. Because God may tell you, or, are they, or God told that person that you love so much, I need you to go in a different direction. And we, you say, oh, well, they went with the karmic. They went with the life partner that they chose to go with for whatever reason. Maybe this lifetime, it's not for them to be head over heels happy. But what maybe this lifetime it was meant for them to be with that person that you want to call the karmic that they're only with because of finances so that they could break poverty off of their bloodline. When you start to grow and heal and evolve, you your perspective and your perception of things will change. And people will say, oh, another reader bit the dust. No, it's the readers out here who don't want to be mad, sad and bitter forever. And if you don't resonate with them, go find a different reader. Because I'm not going to sit here and bash people every single day. If a person is not in a negative energy, I'm not going to force them to be negative for the sake of, of, of appeasing you and your ego. Too many people hate the truth. And, they, and, and that's why you're forever looking for a truth. That's right there in front of you and within you. 99 99 these are positive changes that you can only attract by being positive being bitter and mean and rude and nasty nobody first of all if you're looking for somebody to, to give you an apology or something else you're not going to get it i think i've been on youtube now reading the tarot for three years the, the stories are the same Everybody is still waiting for the same apology from their same quote unquote twin flame of karma. You still haven't gotten it and you probably won't get it. And even if you do get it, it may or may not be sincere. So why is your life dependent on that person apologizing to you? I said in my community post before, if a person has truly experienced love, but you can't be with them, why does that mean they can't still love you? If you have a loved one that has departed earth and they're no longer here, does that mean they didn't love you while they was here? It's the same thing. A person does not have to be with you to love you. Stop hating everybody and then say, oh, I'm love and light. No, you're not. Because <laughs> in your heart, all you're, you're giving out is hatred. You're being biased. You're being harsh. You're being judgmental. And that's why the blessings are not coming in. Knight of Pentacles. This slow moving energy needs to go. Judgment and the ace and the ace of ace of wands. There's a very fast awakening and an ascension that's happening for the entire collective. And it has, it has required you to fight a battle. There has been competition. There has been ego. There has been jealousy, tension, people going through ego deaths. You have to go through all of that. It was necessary 
to mold you for your journey. But don't go through all the hell and then get to the end and say, well, they didn't apologize. That person, they're a karmic. They went to be with a karmic. You're still not focused on you. You're still focused on something or someone else. But guess what? That's their purpose this lifetime. Can you accept that their purpose does not include you in the way that you want it to? That's, that's some, some honesty. That's realness. That's, that's raw and uncut. Everybody's purpose doesn't include you. It doesn't matter how divine and great and beautiful and amazing you are. God actually may have something bigger or better or just more aligned for you. Being so focused on who didn't choose you, you can never focus on who's there waiting on you. This is that Mercury retrograde energy and there's no point in giving so much power to Mercury retrograde, but make the choice to, to leave the past behind. I said, I've been saying this for years. Some people, just, you deal with the same situation every single retrograde. Why? Why? <laughs> You didn't learn enough about it the last retrograde? The same person pops up. I've eliminated so many things from my life now. I don't, I don't get calls during retrograde. My energy doesn't extend out to past situations anymore. That takes inner work. Nobody's going to do that for you. Five of Cups, disappointment, regret, feeling let down. The things are doubling up. This is Gemini, it's duality. Five of Wands, Five of Cups. Right here besides the, the judgment and the Ace of Wands. Despite the heartache, the pain, the loss, the being in let, isolation, feeling let down, feeling neglected, abandoned, rejected, going through the conflict, the competition and everything else, you still have to make a decision with a judgment card to look over your past with some bit of compassion and forgiveness of that person and yourself to embrace a new passionate beginning. And that takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable enough to say, you know what? I'm a little bit broken and I'm a little bit bitter too. But I really want to choose today to be better. That takes that takes a real one. There's no there's nothing distorted about somebody saying, you know what, I'm hurt. This did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. I've been through hell and back 20 times. But you know what? I'm still gonna get up and I'm gonna try this again. But this time I'm gonna make sure that I do it a lot better than I did the last time. Cause the last 20 times I had to learn the same lesson. Two of Cups and the Moon behind the Strength card. It takes strength to see the illusions that you've created about your partnerships. The illusion that just because you're not with somebody that you once cared so much about that that means that you hate each other. The illusion that just because the love was so, so beautiful, so grand and so divine, you're going to be together forever. Divorce was created for a reason because all marriages are not meant to last. Like I said, it's two sides of every coin. Stop thinking that it's going to be all good or that it's going to be all bad. You're going to get a little bit of both. There's good karma. There's bad karma. There's good karmics. There are bad karmics. Three of Wands, this is about growth and expansion. Queen of Cups, growth and expansion of your, your empathy, your compassion, your spiritual gifts, your ability to nurture yourself and to nurture others so that you can move on to peaceful, calmer waters to who? Your actual counterpart. King of Cups, Queen of Cups, these are people who are psychic intuitives. They have a spiritual connection. They're emotionally connected. And then here you have the Two of Cups. They both come with cups. They both come with love. 
and an open heart. And guess what? This could be two people who have been through nothing but pure hell. Who can come together and say, I've been hurt. The other person, I've been hurt too. Let's not hurt each other. Let's try to do life together. It, you don't, it doesn't have to be that hard. But so many hurt people hurt people. You can't get over your past because there was somebody else. Now you're out there and you're projecting all of that negativity onto somebody else. You're mad because you love someone unconditionally who loved you with conditions. Now God's sending you somebody who can love you unconditionally and you have all these conditions for them. That's not fair. And it's not growth. Four of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. Please don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. You may not like what I'm saying, but a lot of you, you trust what the cards say. The card's not lying. Since you like, a lot of people want to say so bad. If I say anything positive, I'm lying. <laughs> Ace of Pentacles, the four of ones, that's your marriage proposal. That's your offer. That's your business. That's your new house. That's your new job. That's the new car. That's the birth of a new, a future generation that's not being born into the same curses that you were. Page of Wands here. That's exciting news about it. But don't just take the outcome. Take the advice. You don't get four of Wands, Ace of Pentacles by believing a bunch of illusions. The illusion that you can be mad, sad, bitter, angry, and resentful, but you're still going to attract all great things in life. No. Because when you meet healthy people, they're not going to want to be around you. Three of Pentacles, partnership. Four of Wands, partnership. That's legacy. Growth, expansion, collaboration, teamwork. The hangman is here. And then the Queen of Pentacles. I feel like you have to surrender. This hangman isn't about delays. The hangman is about surrendering. Surrendering. And the Queen of Pentacles is a grounded, stable energy. This is about surrendering your ego and finally getting to a place where you can be down to earth. You can be generous with your love because you're not afraid that somebody's going to hurt you. You don't get love by not giving love. You don't get great jobs and business deals and creative sparks and ideas by holding on being stingy with everything like this four of pentacles here. Holding on to seven of cups, a bunch of illusions that lead you to just being confused. You have to put out what you're getting back and it's not just what you put out on the surface. Be, this is about being practical. Wow. The magician. And look at this. The emperor and behind it is the king of pentacles. What did I just say? Surrender, queen of pentacles. Surrender everything that's holding you back and manifest. Manifest your counterpart and manifest the business. Step into your purpose. Create the legacy. This emperor, for some of you, it's a, it's a person. It could be the emperor, but the queen and king of pentacles here and this emperor energy, this is you and another person both stepping into this, this, this legacy mindset, this empire state of mind. Both two people being practical. King of pentacles and queen of pentacles, that's mom and dad. They're both down to earth. They're lovers, they're best friends, they're homies, they do business, they can do it all together. They have structure. You cannot have structure when your your mental health is bad because you're so busy all the time. You're boohoo crying and upset about something that probably is no longer even a part of your life. Every that's why when people's heart chakra is messed up, that's why you can't make money. You can't you can't focus. Your divine channel is closed. Even when you get the ideas or you get the money, you can't maintain it.
the hermit. Go within. It's time for a lot of people to do the soul searching and the inner work that's necessary and when it comes to withdrawing everybody thinks that hermit that's about withdrawing from society sometimes you need to withdraw again like i said from your own illusions withdraw from these false ideas and narratives that don't serve your life and your soul purpose and you will start to manifest exactly what you need and what you want for yourself it really doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't. It's, it's, it is easier said than done, but boy, oh boy. You will really see beautiful things happen in your life when you just surrender. Look, never ending story here and now. Some of you, you have something here and now. It could be a never-ending story with a person. Surrender it. Some of you, you are dealing with a never-ending story constantly and you can't see anything good that's here and now. Soulmates. This is about love. Soulmates. The choice. It's time to go. It's time for you to leave something behind here that's not aligned with your soul purpose. It's not bringing you growth. Yeah. Time to go. And then new life. Just let it go. Find the good in goodbye and embrace this new life. And if you just so happen to be a person that you know for a sure fact you are supposed to reconcile with someone from your past, the only way you're going to reconcile with that person from the past is if you are willing to forgive everything that ever happened in that situation. And nobody, <laughs> nobody can forget everything Therefore, for me, I feel like a lot of forgiveness, just being truthful, is conditional. Your forgiveness for other people is conditional. Your forgiveness for yourself, though, needs to be absolute. Forgive yourself for what you allowed that person to do, what you allowed yourself to go through. Or maybe even what you did that wasn't right. But if you know that your forgiveness for that person is conditional... As soon as they mess up your back to square one, you, you shouldn't even waste your time. And the truth is, most of us are adults and things have happened in the past with the person that is going to be carried into every timeline with them. You don't get rid of marriages and children. So if you can't deal with those things from a person, let them go. And by letting them go, you can finally let yourself go. Breathe. Breathe. Yeah, this never-ending story is it, taking up all your time, effort, and energy. Do you understand why you went through it? Because it's really the only purpose that it serves now is, is to find for you to find out your why, which is your purpose. Thinker and happy, happy. <laughs> Manifest happiness. Think about ways to be happy. Learn how to think from a place of positivity, optimism, and happiness so that you can actually receive feminine energy, yin energy. You have to have peace to receive. No place like home. It's time for you to be at home with yourself. And you have a deep knowing. Oh my goodness. Deep knowing for some of you that it's time with the yang energy. You have a deep knowing that it's time for you to take action. Some of you have a deep knowing of who your masculine is. Some of you have a deep knowing for sure of who they're not. Some of you, you have a deep knowing that there is indeed an unfinished symphony with someone. That is most likely your soulmate, your counterpart. There's no place like home. This person makes you happy and they make you happy. This could be someone from the past. This could be someone that's in your life now. But I will say, looking at this deck that I have here, some of you, you're in denial. You don't know if your person is someone that you've already met, someone you haven't met, or if you're sitting there looking at them in the face right now. Nobody, no reader, nobody can tell you that. You have to discern that for yourself and, and decide. Who is this masculine? Because your soul knows who your masculine is. Your mind keeps on creating these illusions for you, and you're telling yourself that you're confused about it. 
And another thing to remember is for some of you, just because you feel like somebody is maybe your counterpart, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to marry them and run off in the sunset with them. It says, wait, the timing is not quite right. Interference. So the timing isn't quite right because there is some type of... Um, interference there's an external party intruding on this relationship for a lot of you this interference is like a, it's an, it, for some it's a person for some it's your own pain old old wounds and childhood issues but this this is a destined partnership for some of you the reason why you and a person can't be together is because of children their path led them to have children with somebody so in this lifetime their purpose as a parent is more important than their purpose as your partner. I know you may not want to hear that, but it's the truth. Them having a child with somebody else that may be the generational curse breaker for their family may be more important. And you having a child or a business or a partner with somebody else may be the thing that God has divinely orchestrated to happen for you to break things off of your family. That's doing God's work. That's not just doing work, like I said, for, for you to be, you know, over, over, over the, the top happy all the time. People talk about, oh, the, the, the sacrifices that come with lower energies or karmic situations. But, oh boy, the sacrifices that come with doing God's work. <laughs> Big. Everybody wants to be divine, feminine, and masculine until God tells you to start doing real divine duties. True love. So you have a destined partnership here with a true love. It's an emotional, physical, and unconditional love. And everything happens for a reason. Accept it. For some of you, you're, you're going to reconnect with somebody. Everything that happened, it happened for a reason. For some of you, you're going to connect with somebody. You're going to realize that all the hell you went through, it was preparing you for this person. Whoever this is, whether it's an old person or a new person, one thing I will say, they are worth waiting for. Whether it's old or new. The issue in one situation for some of you is the financial challenges. The situation, it seems one-sided. Somebody is still dealing with toxicity or codependency from childhood issues or unhealed wounds. That's for a lot of you. That's the interference. The interference for a lot of you is financial issues and somebody has not fully healed. But the attraction that you feel with this person is mutual. It's real love, but they have real life happening. And people, it's easy to judge and say, oh my goodness, they're going through this, they're going through that. But what about when you was going through something? And that person that you said, oh, they're so karmic and they chose that other person. Maybe they went to the other person because you was going through something at the time and they didn't think that you were a good fit. You got to be careful how you treat people because the same things that happen to you is going to come back around for God to see how you're going to handle yourself. How are you going to handle your unhealed self when it shows up in, up as another person standing in front of you? Mm. Be careful who all you call karmic. Because let's not, let's not sit here and act like all of us were once, once um, less healed, less evolved. Karmic. We've all been there. And being karmic doesn't mean that you are out here acting a, a fool. No. But you weren't always as healed and evolved as you are. Let go of the judgment. Harsh judgment. It's nothing but a bunch of bias and prejudice. It's, it's hatred. What worth waiting for? What I say? Somebody is worth waiting for. Whether it's an old person or a new person, it doesn't matter the history. Well, I feel like spirit is saying it's new. 
You may be flirting with somebody, getting to know a person now. It's something fairly new. It's worth waiting for. Some of you, it's an old person, but you're flirting as if they're brand new. It's worth waiting for. It's for you to decide. The love here is new, whether it's with an old person or a new person. The love, the, the energy of this love is new. It's up for you to decide, is it a new person or an old person? Worth waiting for, it still came out. Divine timing is at work in your love life. But right now isn't the time for some of you to come together with this person. There's still healing that needs to take place. And as strong as this message is, I know it's a lot of people in the collective who are still missing some very key points when it comes to healing. Calling in your soulmate. Yeah, you're manifesting this person. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. And that's what I'm saying. If you're manifesting somebody from a place of being stingy, possessive, mad, sad, angry, and upset, you're going to call in that type of energy. So it would be best that you let go of control issues and you may want to release your ex at the same time and understand that it is safe for you to love. You have a soulmate coming in. But for some of you, like I said, there's financial challenges here. And it goes back to what I said before. Somebody's heart chakra is messed up and that's why they're having financial challenges. This isn't the time really for you to judge that person because maybe their heart will shatter just like yours was. Everybody that's having financial challenges, it's not because they are, um, it's not because they are silly. It's not because that they have bad habits. It's not because they're irresponsible. It's just like every person that you see that's overweight. It's not because they have bad eating habits. You don't know why a person is in their current situation. And you don't know what situation a person is in, not because they chose, but because God chose for them to be in this situation. So what you should learn to do is trust your own discernment and get close enough to God for God to tell you who and what you should trust. But trusting another person starts with you being able to trust yourself. A lot of people can't trust themselves or their decisions because you're still in regret about your past. So you live your life thinking that you can't trust anybody and then you wonder why you're single you're unhappy or not attracting certain opportunities. You don't trust the opportunity when it comes knocking on your door. You slam the door in every opportunity's face. It's somebody here that you should allow yourself to get to know. Be playful and give the relationship a chance. Look, stay optimistic about your love life, but you're going to have to forgive and learn from those toxic codependent and family situations that you've been in. This is about the law of attraction. Being able to attract the one requires that you free yourself. Take back control of your own life and power and understand that you deserve love. And that means that if you want to reconcile with a person from your past or you want to reconcile with a person from a past life that's entering your life now, do it. But stop deceiving yourself into believing that you don't have romantic feelings for people. Some of you are lying to yourselves. You're saying that you don't have romantic feelings for a person from your past. Having romantic feelings for that person doesn't mean that you need to be committed to them. But stop saying that you hate them. Stop saying that they're karmic. Stop worrying about who they're with. And say, you know what? I love that person, but we, we're just not going to work out this lifetime. Go out and meet new people. But start with the things that you say. Stop lying to yourself. Some of you literally, it's a battle of your own mind. I can't stand that person. Yet you know this a lie. You were meant to love that person un unconditionally. You know you love a person unconditionally when they can hurt you and you still don't hate them. That doesn't mean let somebody be beat you up and be a bully. But that means that you were able to show God that, you know. <laughs> You can love God just like God loved the church. Like you served your purpose in that person's life. 
Now go and allow the right person to serve the right purpose in your life. But please be honest with yourself. Every single time I have a positive reading, ever I will never let that person back. Okay. <laughs> nobody, nobody is encouraging you to let somebody back. But the truth is, a lot of people who get in the comments and say how they will never let somebody back, the main person that they, they, they're saying they won't let back, if they call them, text them, or show up at, them, at their house, they're communicating with them. Readers get on here every day and say, don't deal with a person from the past. Trust me. They're dealing with people from the past. What you choose to do is your business. <laughs> That's the truth. Nobody has to deal with the consequences of your actions except you. Be real with yourself. And realness will, will follow it. You, you will attract things that are real. Yeah. Love yourself first. And true love will come in. Love yourself enough, baby, to just be honest with yourself. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Tarot Church. Because I just felt like this needed to be said to somebody. It's a choice that has to be made. And nobody can make it with you. TikTok is in the reverse. Time is out. Something has to be done by the book. Or else you're going to keep going around and around and around until you figure out why you keep going around and around and around. And Spirit is saying, and the truth needs to be told. Truth be told, it's time for you to open up to receive milk and honey. It's time for you to be open to having happiness. Love is a lot of things. It's an action. It's a choice. You know, it's a lot of different things. And like I keep saying, love is what you're after. Love can come in the form of friends, family, lovers. Love can, it can be self-love. Love can come from a past person, a new person. Love can come from a deceased person, a departed loved one, an angel, God, answer. Love can come in so many different forms. Pick what aligns with you. If you feel like a person from your past is a person that you know you, you can love no matter what, and be committed to them because loving a person and being committed to them is, is not entirely the same thing. You go for that person from the past. If, if you know somebody from the past has changed, just like you've changed, and you feel like that's who you want to be committed to, do it. If you know you cannot deal with a person from the past, do everything you can to go out and meet the person that you're trying to manifest. Go out, have fun, be playful, flirt. Let go of the resentments. It's only going to cause you to waste more time. <laughs> I'm hearing spirits say, no, first, in, in your past situations, you had to spend time there to gain lessons and wisdom. But if you keep yourself in that cycle of hopelessness and despair and resentment, then you start to waste time. You already learned the lesson. So surrender the unhealthy relationships and surrender procrastination. You're procrastinating when it comes to going back out, getting in, into the swing of things and meeting new people, whether it's business partners, friends, family, whatever, because you're refusing to surrender the connections that are unhealthy. Even the connection that some of you have with yourself is unhealthy. Surrender to effortlessness. So if it's hard, it's probably not for you. It's 
says here, stop pushing so hard. The art of living means going with the flow instead of trying to force the river. If you have to force it, it's not for you. You should be flowing, not forcing. If you feel like you need to force a person to be with you, force a person to change, it's probably just not for you. Surrender fear. <laughs> Let go of the fearful stories that you're telling yourself. Some of you are you're, you're talking yourself out of things before you even get started. You're cursing your own blessings before they can even come in. When you meet certain people, you automatically assume that everything about them is a red flag. They're going to be just like the past person. Are you the same person you were when you met the past person? No. Therefore, you shouldn't be attracting the same people. So why are you assigning negativity to somebody brand new? Why are you still assuming that a person from the past is the exact same? Unless they've shown you time and time again, but... Are you even allowing yourself to get to know people, whether they are new or from the past? Or are you just passing judgment? Harsh judgment and being biased and prejudiced from a place of fear because you're so afraid that you don't want of being hurt again. Fear attracts more fear. What did I just say? Once again, because y'all, the car said it, not me. I said it, and then the car said it too. Surrender the negative thinking. Take control of your thoughts. Surrender defensiveness. Oh, that's a good one. It says defensiveness is a sign of weakness. To communicate in a more empowered way, stay centered and hear someone out. Then offer a clear, non-defensive response. Wow, thank you, Spirit, because I promise if I post a, a, negative, a, a positive message just like this one here, I'm sure everybody gets in the comments and they're so defensive. You don't know what you're talking about. You you haven't experienced loss and you haven't gone through what I was. How do you know what I've gone through? Or any other reader or any other person. Outside of you seeing these cards tossed out on this, on this desk, you know nothing about me or any other messenger. How do you know what's on? There's people who have started YouTube channels in their car, homeless. How do you know what somebody has gone through? Once again, it's harsh judgment. It's prejudice. It's bias. Constantly. It's negative thinking. And then those are the same people that, that want the world. Want, want us to just gift wrap the whole globe for them. But you're mean spirited. You're nasty. You're ugly to people. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. Limiting ideals and self-limiting beliefs. Because the hierophant came out first. Are you willing to ch challenge the status quo now? Are you still living your life according to what your friends and family told you you should be doing? That means that you're not allowing yourself to step fully into your own personal power. Yeah, and surrender to passion. Do what makes you passionate. People who are passionate about doing God's work. <laughs> you have to surrender to spirit and, and do things that will require that you surrender resentment. Because to be honest, most of the time, <laughs> doing all the things that God truly calls you to do, you really don't want to do it. Is is not flattering to the ego. So this is a battle of ego versus higher self, and that keeps people stuck between should I stay in the past or move forward. That's north node versus south node. That's bad karma, or do you want good karma? It's what side of the coin do you want to be on? It's not that confusing. You confusion comes with it comes anytime you have to make a choice. A choice has to be made and everybody is in anxiety right now because you have to be the one to make the choice. This happens every year. 
every Mercury retrograde, every year around the holidays, close to the end of the year, everybody gets in a big frenzy about, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Because already the mind is starting to wonder, how is next year going to be? Am I going to make more money next year? Am I going to, are the relationships with my friends and family members are going to be better? Am I going to lose weight? Those are, those are the choices in front of you now that you are required to make a decision about. Am I going to hook back up with my ex or am I going to get on a dating website? That's your choice and your decision. And operating out of fear and being resentful, resentful about the past is not going to help you go into anything in the future. I said what I said. <laughs> Unapologetically.